Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Q and Andy Japandi, where I answer your questions about life, studying abroad, out here in Japan. So question number one, what is the food like? So as you guys know, Japan is very famous for its food. It doesn't matter if you go to a Michelin restaurant or just down the old conveni to grab you a little something something. No matter what you get in Japan, it's gonna taste good. So question number two, what new foods did you try? So before I first came out to Japan back in 2013 when I was stationed out in Yokosuka when I was still active duty US Navy, uh, before that I was stationed out in San Diego and they have a very big Asian population. They have their own little um, shopping center. So on the weekends, I'd usually go down there, grab some snacks and drinks and stuff like that and uh, head back to base. And I did try a lot of Japanese foods, a lot of, you know, kind of the common stuff like ramen and tonkatsu and stuff like that. And I definitely love that stuff out here, don't get me wrong. But one of the things that I tried when I actually got out to Japan was actually at my first hanami. So there was a guy, and you can actually see it in one of my old Andy Japandi videos. It was the first hanami, I think back in 2014. Uh, one of the guys there offered me deep fried crickets out of a can. They were like soaked in like shoyu or something like that. And I was like, ah, deep fried crickets, that's a little out there. But you know, the drinks were flowing, the brain was slowing, and I'm like, I'm not gonna turn down a cricket. So I'm like, all right, three, two, and just ate that thing. And I was like, tastes like a raisin. <laughs> that was the thing that threw me off the most. It, 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 it tastes like raisin. I was like, huh. And so question number three, what is the weirdest thing you ate? Well, we already went over the deep fried crickets out of a can, so uh, <laughs> can't really top that, huh? So question number four. What kind of food did you miss? So after I had gotten out of the Navy back in 2015 and went back to America for about 40 years, um, there was a lot of Japanese food that I missed. Um, a lot of it seems pretty pedestrian, pretty commonplace. You know, stuff like ramen, tonkatsu, um, chuhai was a big one. <laughs> they don't really export a whole lot of chuhai uh, to the States. Uh, for those that know, chuhai is short for sochu highball, which is a adult beverage that's uh, really good. It's basically like Japanese vodka mixed with uh, some kind of fruit base usually and uh, oh so good so good. And aside from uh, the usual suspects as far as Japanese foods um, another thing that I missed was actually the attention to detail with a lot of international foods out here in Japan. So even if you go to just your ye olde basic McDonald's the attention to detail to the uh, different food items that you get and stuff like that. It's definitely a step above uh, most other places I've been to, whether it's America or elsewhere in the world. And of course, how could I forget about all the Japan exclusive food items at those restaurants? So question number five, how did you get involved in the community? So in the days before the you know what was stirring in the air, one of the things I did to get myself a little involved with the community was just going out to community events like uh, Matsuri in the summertime when I was stationed in Yokosuka and just, you know, mingling with the crowd, going to the different uh, stalls and things like that and just, you know, hanging out. But aside from the local Japanese community, uh, the community that I connected with the most, I'd have to say would be the uh, YouTube community out here in Japan. Um, even though it's changed a lot over the years, I still maintain a lot of uh, friendships with uh, fellow YouTubers out here and coming out to Japan was like the first time I've ever actually met somebody else who did YouTube aside from myself because you know before I came out here I was basically known as like the YouTube guy among my friend group uh, like some of them maybe put up like one or two videos <laughs> because I forced them to and then afterwards they kind of gave up on it but when I moved out here, man, this was the first place where I could actually interact with other YouTubers and, you know, we could talk shop and share stories and stuff like that and do collabs and it was a fun time, man. And I can't wait to uh, do it again when uh, things get a little better. You know what I'm saying? All right, so question number six. What did you do at your service learning placement or internship? 
So I haven't really done any internships since arriving in Japan, but I guess I could talk about the kind of work that I do out here, just little arubaito part-time jobs. So aside from going to school full-time, I also do video editing work for either fellow YouTubers, uh, production studios, or uh, just doing stuff for local businesses out here. And that helps give me a little bit of extra pocket change when the uh, GI Bill just isn't enough to uh, sustain me that month. And it's a lot of good fun. I really do enjoy making videos, whether it's for myself or for others. And so the last question, question number seven. In what ways did your placement or internship inform your future goals? So yeah, like I said in the previous question, haven't gone through any sorts of internships at the time of this recording. But as far as my arubaito, part-time gigs, uh, that's something I definitely do want to pursue more of in the future, whether it's uh, doing video editing work behind a desk or out in the field doing uh, actual filming. Um, I really do love the video production process, so it's definitely something I want to pursue more of in the future. And when I'm able to work full-time out here in Japan, definitely want to make it a career. So yeah guys, that was today's episode of Q and Andy Japani. And if you have any questions about life in Japan, studying abroad in Japan, stuff like that, be sure to leave them in the comments down below in the boobie boops and your questions could be in the next video. And also, if you're interested in studying abroad out here in Japan, my school, Lakeland University of Japan, is offering a referral scholarship. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description and uh, enter your information and uh, We'll get you started with that. So, with that said, guys, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.